Welcome back to Ringworm. You mind if I start uh, with a little bit of a rant? I've been living out here in the woods alone for over two years. Stayed in six different tents, maybe? Five, six, seven, don't know. Some of them are over a decade old. Some of them are sun bleached as all get out, just burn through where all the color's gone. Not a single one has leaked a drop of water. And I just got a new uh, four-person Kelty. Uh, it's it's just a tent. All it's got to do is keep the bugs out, keep the rain off. Five, six days after I set the thing up, I get the first rain and it goes right through the top of the tent. Why do companies make this garbage? It was like two o'clock in the morning or something. I moved my hand in my sleeping bag and I felt wet. I'm like, what is this coming from? Maybe a water bottle tipped over or something. And I flipped my sleeping bag back. It was my big winter sleeping bag. It's like a foot of loft. And the water had gone all the way through it, through the top layer, through the bottom layer, and under the ground, and there's a giant puddle. A brand new tent. I mean, luckily I got this place, so it was like 2.30 in the morning. I packed up my crap and came in here, and I slept great. <laughs> it's really nice to have this place. Anyway, I'm going to finish my coffee, and since it's uh, raining, and probably is going to rain all day, we'll see if we can do some 3D printing off that Jackery battery. I took a little bit of time yesterday in between other stuff I was doing and uh, took the battery out, plugged it into the solar panels, and let it charge up for a few hours. Uh, it wasn't a super sunny day, it was kind of overcast, but I think we've got, uh, yeah, we got 70% battery. I've got some editing to do today. My computer draws, I think, about maybe 150 watts when it's uh, really working hard, and I think that's what the 3D printer uses with the bed heater and the extruder going. So I don't know, we'll see. I think that'll be enough to do what I want to do today. I'm actually really excited to do this. I love 3D printing. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to do CAD designing, but I haven't had either of my 3D printers out in uh, over two years that I've been out here. So this is going to be really cool to try out. I'm looking forward to it. Just for the sake of this video, I thought I'd pick something really quick and easy to, geez, oh Pete's loud birds. Something quick and easy to print. Mostly because, ooh, you hear the thunder coming in again? Uh, mostly because the smaller the piece you print, the less time it takes, and so it won't take as much power. And if something goes wrong in the printing and it stops halfway, you're not like three hours in and then you have to throw it away and start over again. So I need a bunch of these little things. I use so much propane, I have so many different propane cans out here that I'm always constantly hooking these up and unhooking them instead of having to get a wrench every time. Some of these hoses come with this little plastic piece that you can just put on here and then you can tighten it by hand. This is the only one I have and it's broken, just barely hanging together, but it's perfect. Little tiny piece. Once I design it, I can put like three or four on a tray, just print them all at once. It's a great test print. All right, let's we'll see if we can figure this out. I'm using uh, Autodesk Fusion, which I've never used before, so I probably won't film a whole bunch of this. It's gonna be a lot of muddling around to figure out how to use this program. Let's see, let's do the inside, it's about 26, corner to corner. Sorry, I don't uh, have a screen mirroring program. This won't, certainly won't be a CAD tutorial anyway. And also, because I'm not very familiar with this, I'm going to likely build this in a very ugly way. There's some uh, more elegant ways to design stuff in CAD, and then there's some sloppy workarounds. This is going to be a big slop job. And the outside diameter here is about 37. And then the very outside is... About 50. This is a very ugly way to do this. But it doesn't take too long and it'll probably print. So that's pretty close to the right thing. Not too bad. This is hollow. I don't know if you can 
see that, but they do that because uh, when these are injection molded, it saves plastic, it saves cycle time, and it's a way to just, just have enough strength, which clearly it didn't because it broke, but just have enough strength with the amount of material they give you, you know, for the price. So the one I'm going to make, this is actually the size, the thickness of the nut that your wrench grabs onto. It's only this wide. I'm going to make mine wider just because that'll be harder to break. And I think I'll also print it solid. It might deform a little bit as the plastic cools if you have a big block of plastic and then as it cools out it can shrink and do weird things. But I think what I'll actually try to do is just print one that's just kind of a shell like this that doesn't use much plastic because it won't take very long to print. Make sure it's the right size, make sure it fits on there and everything, and then I'll print another one or two or four that are solid and I can print them all at once. So I could print as many as I can fit on here so it'd actually be quite a few. I don't think I need more than four of them. Plus once I design it I already have the CAD file and the 3D print file just sitting there so if I want more of course I might, I don't know, I might keep this here. Might find a spot on the shelf for it but I'll have the files waiting so if I ever need another one just uh, plug the thing in, hit print and you get as many more as you want. I actually have no idea how many people are familiar with 3D printing and how many people have never seen it. I know when I started doing it many years ago, it was kind of mind-bending that you could just make something out of nothing. And you can go online uh, to these giant websites and just look up all sorts of stuff that people have already designed. You can download the file and print it out, and then, you know, a few minutes, a few hours, you've got it in your hand. I'll get this finished up and saved, and then uh, I'll show you how the 3D printer works. Yeah, now that that's sketched out on there, we just have to choose a thickness. This is about nine and a half millimeters, so let's go, oh, let's go 15. That seems like the right number, doesn't it? Now we want to extrude it. We look at it from a different angle so we can see what happens. Distance 15. So there's the piece. We wanted to get real fancy. We could round off some of the edges here. Which, this is ringworm. We're pretty fancy. Uh, actually, on this thing, we got those top edges rounded off too. We better do that as well. There we go. Now it's nice. Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't get this thing. I just spent an hour trying to get this to hook up my computer, and I eventually got a hold of the company that makes these things amazingly is still in business and they said it won't work on my computer. My computer's way too new. So I got uh, about 40 minutes before we have a huge thunderstorm. I'm gonna see if I can get out, pick up my other printer and get back before it storms. If not, I'm gonna be screwed. All right, here goes. Don't worry, I got it. Oh, oh, you hear it? <laughs> Holy crap, it got dark. It was so dark I couldn't even see what I was doing, so I thought I'd take a break for lunch. Man, I love good storms like this. As long as you have a good tent, you know. Not a POS that leaks the first day you use it. Well, I guess unless we're going to make this an audio-only show, I might have to get some light going in here. It's about the same brightness as like 9.45 at night, 9.30 maybe. This place is quite a mix of weirdness, isn't it? All home milled lumber, made by hand, built by one dude in the middle of nowhere while he listens to podcasts and books all day and 3D print stuff by lantern light. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird place. Maybe before I get printing, if it's light enough over here, uh, I could show you guys, for those of you that don't know how these work, maybe give a quick explanation. So a 3D printer is basically a mechanized glue gun. It uh, uses rolls of plastic filament 
like this. It's like a string trimmer for your grass. Goes in through these holes. You can see there's an old piece of filament right there. And it goes through and there are heated nozzles on the bottom. Oh, one of them's missing for some reason. I think I had trouble with one, so I switched them out. You can see the little nozzle there. Here, let me see if I can move this down. So maybe you can see the nozzle in there. It's just like a hot glue gun nozzle, basically. So if you were to print something plastic like this, a cap, design it in CAD, and then the 3D software actually cuts this up digitally into a whole bunch of layers. You can choose how thick each layer is, but they're very, very thin. If you cut this up into layers, you can see the first couple layers would be this part, the bottom of it, so it'd be, it would print a solid circle, fill it all the way in. And then when you, once you got up this far, each layer after that would just be a circle on top of it. So the first, I don't know, thickness like this, maybe three, four, five layers, solid circles, and then just a perimeter. And each time it prints one layer, the whole bed will move down a little bit so it can print the next. So it'll start with the bed all the way up at the bottom of the nozzles to print the first layer and then each successive one the bed will move down. When you design this piece you could print it like this, you could print it like this, you could print it like this, and there are advantages of each way of printing it, each orientation. If you printed it this way, your first layer would be a little piece there, and then the next layer would be a piece there and a piece there, and then the next layer would be there and there that makes sense so it print this and then it print this and this and this but once you get up to here it can't really print in mid-air so it'll print a scaffolding in here it'd be a lot less dense a little like a mesh kind of in there you can choose what kind of scaffolding you want and then that piece you'd break out of there which sounds easy sometimes it's a pain to get the support structure out of there and sometimes it's not too big a deal same thing if you were to print something like this the very first layer would just be a dot and then the next layer would be a little bit bigger circle and a little bigger you could print it hollow you could print it solid but either way it's going to have to have some kind of a support underneath the very bottom of the ball down there for each layer to have something to sit on this is an easy print doing this piece because it'll just lay flat on there i'm going to print it solid there's no weird shapes or angles or anything to print if I was going to print it like this on edge, it would have to do some strange stuff to fill in underneath here. And then it would have to fill in in here, so when you get up to the top layers here, it has some support. Oh, it's finally getting here. It's going to get loud. The other big difference about this, you can see the size of the build plate on here is about, eh, it's probably twice the size of the little one that I had. So the size of the part that you can print in any given printer is just based on the size of the plate. And then also the Z travel up and down. So this one that you could print a brick that's as big as this plate, this way, this way, and maybe about that tall. So a lot of the things I print on here, if it's a big piece, like these things, these were, uh, I was working on a giant spirograph that I, <laughs> I wanted to make. That's an easy one to print on there, it's nice and flat. And then this is gonna be a circle, but I can't fit the whole circle on there, so I'd print four, pre four pieces like that, or however many pieces you want to. Then you'd have to glue them together. Ooh. I just heated the plate up a little bit and it's got weird static on it. It also depends on what kind of plastics. You can print a few different kinds of plastics and even some weird rubbers and stuff on these cheap printers. There are printers out there that print in just about anything these days. There's, <laughs> there's even a, a printer that prints in titanium, which I think would be so cool to do. It's a completely different technology. Instead of extruding material through a little tip, it's actually a bed of, I think they fill it up, it's basically like titanium powder, and then a laser goes through and heats the titanium up and creates each layer as it goes up and then you brush all the powder out of it. I think that's how they do titanium. They're all a lot different. Some of the printers even, instead of extruding onto a bed like this, the whole bottom is full of liquid that's liquid plastic, and then I believe it uses a laser to harden certain areas of the liquid to make your part. So the part actually prints upside down, the print bed goes down into the liquid, and I think the laser goes from the bottom. And it comes up and your part just kind of comes up out of the out of the glop. So I don't know if I've used this computer with this printer before, so hopefully I can get this one to work. I better stop talking and get going because I only got 56% of my battery left. And once the bed turns on, it does this uh, will heat up. 
for most plastics. I print most everything with uh, PLA plastic just because it's one of the easiest to use. You can also print ABS and uh, a few other ones. But for PLA, I'll heat this up and that just helps the parts stick on the very first layer. Of course, you heat this up, you don't want to leave it on for hours and hours because that's killing my battery over there. I think I might have showed this in the last video, but there's some stuff I just have in my junk box here. This is uh, 3D printed like chain mail. I don't think I designed this one. I think I found this online and just printed it out to see how it would work. But that's a cool thing about 3D printers is you can print stuff interlocking. Same with this. It's a part on a part. You can actually, yeah, you could print a ball inside of a ball if you think about how that would work layer by layer. But that's printed as one piece. You could print a chain with all the links already interlocked. Here's another piece of uh, weird fabric chain mail. So it's all just little interlocked loops. And it prints as one piece, printed out just like that on the bed. Weird stuff, huh? It's very bizarre feeling. I figured since it was such a gloomy day, I'm going to use the uh, glow in the dark for the test print here. Just preheating the extruder there and flushing out. Looks like I had the brown uh, wood colored filament in there last, so it's pushing all that out of there. Alright, let's try this again. Maybe we can get the software to work this time. There's our one little knob. Go ahead and slice it up. Ooh. <laughs> I feel that in my feet. Layer height, we're going to slice it into 0.2 millimeter slices. And then uh, any of the inside fill, it's uh, the density set at 20%, so it'll be like a honeycomb inside of the outside shell. And you can set your print speed, how fast it, it'll actually move around. Travel speed is how fast it moves when it's not printing, if it has to jump across to the next piece. You've got the temperature of the extruder, the temperature of the plate, the build plate, what kind of support you want, build plate adhesion type, so it can uh, set down a layer first. For your piece to uh, build on. Looks good enough to me. Let's slice it. So at that print speed, which it must have been very slow, that's an hour and three minute print. I'm gonna X out of that and <laughs> that's really getting fun out there. Yeah, I'm gonna delete that and speed up the print. That seems a little excessive for such a small piece. Wow, hopefully you can hear me. You can see on this piece it'll show you the red is the walls so you can choose the wall thickness before it does the inside fill of the honeycomb you can choose how many layers you want the top or bottom to be sometimes you want that more layers maybe you do six layers on top and the walls would only be three layers and the bottom would be something different something tells me that tent is going to be full of water That it's nice and dry in the shower over there though. I'm gonna have to hit that up in an hour or two. This is a newer version of the software that I've used. It's kind of cool, it's just looking through uh, some of these drop downs. This actually gives you the percent of the time and the time itself down to the second of s that's spent on each part of the printing. So the inside fill, nine minutes, the inner walls, 21 minutes, the outer walls, 10 minutes. All the different stuff is all laid out in there. That's pretty sweet. It's starting to print, so it's heating the right extruder up to 210. It's now 210. And it's gonna heat the platform up to 60 degrees. It's at 36 now. Sorry, I don't know if my camera actually focuses that, <laughs> that close. Maybe you can't see anything. I did make a couple of little changes just to speed it up a little bit so now the print's down to 46 minutes. That still seems a little excessive to me for such a small part, but we'll see what happens. If you ever find yourself printing a lot of the same part over and over, what I do is, you know, start at the preset speeds and temperatures on here, and then every print I just bump it up another 10% and go right to the point where it starts looking not as good quality as you want, and then just back it off a little bit. be a little bit hard to see what's going on until it actually gets a little bit printed. I went ahead and uh, switched out the plastic. I started printing with the glow-in-the-dark stuff but it's too hard to see when it's this dark in here. I mean it would look nice once it's all built up but to actually see each layer individually I went for the uh, gaudy orange. So each 
flare, it'll print the outline of it and then it'll fill on the inside. But because this is the first several layers are the actual outside of the part, it should be a solid layer. So it'll be three or four or five solid layers of plastic and then just an outline with a 20% fill inside of it. And then when it gets to the very top, it'll be solid layers again. While I'm waiting for that to print, I'm just uh, looking through all these piles and piles of old CAD files I have. That was an iPhone stand back before you could just buy an iPhone stand. It was one of my uh, machetes. The old handle broke, so I 3D printed a new one out of uh, that wood PLA. So there's a scale for either side. Just print it out, bolt it on. Even uh, measured out the exact size of the nuts that were going to go in there. So they just fit right perfectly in there. A whole bunch of these uh, glow-in-the-dark uh, Christmas ornaments. For a fair number of uh, 3D printers, if you break something on the printer, you can go online and download a new part. Obviously, it has to be plastic. This printer doesn't have so much plastic; it's a lot of metal. But that little one, you could uh, 3D print probably a quarter of the printer on another printer. I haven't kept up on the stuff that much, but. When I started doing this, you could buy a kit that was just all the metal and the wires and the nozzles, the heaters and stuff. And the kit was, I don't know, relatively cheap. And then you'd go use somebody else's 3D printer to print your own printer out in a whole bunch of pieces and then you put it all together. It's kind of mind blowing, but a lot of these parts could be made out of flat. Like this, I put this uh, light in here. I want to be able to turn it off. And I just 3D printed the box, measured everything out. So that little switch receptacle is uh, 3D printed, on, I think, on this printer. And a lot of these pieces, plastic pieces, these don't, these are not 3D printed, but you could 3D print replacements. So this was a replacement piece for the other printer that was a certain size, and then I took all their style out of it, their brand name and stuff, and just made my own design. This is the part that actually snapped onto the other printer that had my design on it just a little enclosure like maybe two inches by two inches or so you can see how we're doing here yep it's a growing there's a whole bunch of this stuff you can make in CAD and 3d print that if you didn't have a printer you would just make it some other way if you're handy and you're like making stuff like some of this stuff you'd make out of wood or you get a piece of metal and weld it or drill it out or you know find some other way to make it but the cool thing about 3d printing is you get a good set of calipers so you can measure exactly whatever you want to make and then when you print it out it's exact like things are just a press fit that's just the little block that has the light switch inside the 3d printer but you measure the switch out and you know exactly that it'll fit in there I needed some plastic washers for my crossbow to fit the between the point and the bolt itself and you can't buy a plastic washer exactly that size but it for whatever reason needed to be that size so hey measure it out throw it in CAD print them out in four minutes and you have exactly what you need I had an old camper that I lived in for a little while and it had a fan in the ceiling that was totally old busted nasty almost all the fins were missing and you couldn't order just that part you had to order the whole fan itself so I figured well I'll just measure it out print out the new fan stick it in there works great even fits exactly on the uh, spline on the motor there are you sold yet? More? You want to see more? No, just a couple more. Let's see what else is on here. For a little while I was getting into uh, designing and 3D printing fishing lures. So this is a popper I designed and the water goes right down the middle when you pop it and then shoots out two holes in the top. Either way it just goes when you pop it. When you replace uh, strings on a guitar, they sell these little hand winders. You, winders, you stick the one end over the peg on the guitar and then it's got a crank on it so you can loosen the peg really quickly. Well, that took too long, so I figured I'd make one that fits exactly on a drill. So the guitar peg fits right in there. And your square drive uh, bit that goes in your drill fits right in the back of it. Man, can you change some strings fast with one of these. <laughs> the only downside is, it's very easy to destroy your guitar. If you put it on there at just a little bit of an angle, it's kind of dangerous. I don't use it on my good guitar. I was looking at this wondering what the heck it is. I can't remember what I was making years ago. And I needed to use a drill, drill straight into something at exactly, you know, exactly vertically, not at an angle or whatever. And they do sell something for that, 
made out of metal or at least uh, sleeved in metal in the inside but I didn't have access to it and I couldn't get it right away so you just 3d print yourself a drill bit guide it's not something that'll last a lifetime but if you just need it in a hurry to drill one hole you can either print it in a half an hour or you gotta order it or drive out and get it you can see because this one was just a test I didn't want to waste a lot of time in plastic so the inside's fairly hollow that's 20 percent fill so we're drawing like 150 watts and occasionally up to like 300 it's popped but for the most part it's been around around 150. So the power that it's using right now, 40% battery that I have left will last about four or five hours. Here's a real simple one. On my snowmobile helmet I have a heated visor and you have a, I think it's an RCA that plugs into the visor and then it goes down to the snowmobile on the handlebars and just plugs like an RCA plug in there. But then when you're riding it without the cord plug in there, you just have an open plug, an open hot plug. So this is super tiny, but it's just the cap that goes over that plug with a little hole to put a leash on it so you don't lose the cap. 3D printers are awesome. They're really great. Now that I've got this out, I mean, I used to use this for 10 years, I used them all the time. Anything like this that you see, you need a little piece of something or other, or you wonder, I wonder if I could make something to do that thing. You can just whip it out in no time. Now that I got this out, I need a bigger place. I need some place where I can keep this out all the time. I mean, I can't put it in the lean-to. I just get destroyed in there, but it's a little bit too big for this space. What would one do? 99% there. You might notice, oh, we're done. Something else uh, you might notice the difference between this and the other printer is that this is enclosed. Some of the plastics you print with are, some are more forgiving than others. PLA is a really easy one to, to print with but some others can warp or not stick together or you get all sorts of weirdness if the temperature around it changes a lot. So this is actually a top that goes on here too. I just don't usually put it on because I don't print with those other plastics very much, but it keeps the temperature inside exactly the same. You don't get any breeze going through there or anything. Some of the higher end pr printers actually keep the compartment. It'll heat it to a certain temperature. This just uh, encloses it. There's no heater in there. The other thing is the reason this has two extruders on it is because you can print in two different materials or two different colors. Like sometimes if I'm printing big parts that need a, a lot of support underneath them that you're just going to break off and throw away. I use some junk colors or some plastic I've had for a really long time, like stuff I just don't care about, and then print the actual part in good plastic. But you could also make these multicolored. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to for this, but some pieces you're printing you can have multiple colors uh, mixed together in the same print. Came out pretty nice. So here's the original piece and here's the one that I made. So I just made it a little bit uh, taller so it'd be a little stronger. But other than that you could uh, pretty well replicate any small plastic part with one of these things. The only difference you can see up close is that you can see all the different layers in this. If you wanted to use a 3D printed part though and didn't want it to look like a piece of plastic, I've uh, in the past used Bondo or the Bondo finishing stuff that's uh, one part and you can just smear it on with your fingers and it'll fill those tiny little ridges in there and then you sand it off and then you can paint it like it's a piece of wood or plastic or metal. So in the end, you wouldn't really know it was uh, just a piece of 3D printed plastic. What do you think? Are you sold? I am. I'm totally sold on keeping a 3D printer out here. That thing just takes up way too much space. Am I coming across as a 3D printer salesman? <laughs> and I kind of am. For anybody that's creative, likes to work with their hands, likes to invent stuff, they're fantastic. They're so much fun. There's kind of a learning curve because there are two things to learn in order to 3D print. There's the CAD side of it, and there's a lot of uh, open source free software that's pretty good to do the designing. The first, when I first got a 3D printer, I had an idea for this product that I wanted to make, and it was suggested to me that I get a 3D printer, and I was like, yeah, 
What's that? <laughs> and that's actually how I ended up with that real small printer. But I didn't know anything about CAD, any 3D modeling or anything. And I found, I think I found a hundred dollar program at one of the big box stores, electronic store. And I just grabbed it off the shelf and it was, instead of precise angles and measurements, it was more like make a ball and then make a block and stick the block in the ball and subtract the block from the ball and then you're left with this shape or slice off this part of this and add it to something else. So it's really intuitive. It took maybe a day to figure out how to, how to use the program and that's from no background in anything like this. And I used that program for, I don't know, a year and then I was like, no, I'm really into this and there's a lot more I wanna be able to do. So I went from the lowest end all the way to the top end so that's when I started using SolidWorks. And so from one program I learned in a day and then a year experience, it took me months in order to be able to use the high-end CAD programs just to do really basic stuff. But once you learn it, there's no, there's just no end to what you can do with it. But if you find any of this stuff interesting, get a low end. I mean, maybe just Google easy to learn 3D modeling software, free software, and see what you can find. I mean, there's a ton of it out there. If you can figure out how to do that, then you get a cheap 3D printer. I mean, you can get 3D printers for a few hundred bucks. You can also actually skip the design part of it, the CAD programs, the 3D modeling. CAD is computer-aided design. I don't know if everybody knows that. But you could actually go on websites and just download stuff and print it out. So you could do, I wonder if you could even do it. Yeah, I think you could do it completely without any designing software. Their STL file is what the, uh, 3D printers, most 3D printers use. So you go online and you say STL files for fishing lures and you could find pages and pages and pages of them that people have designed the fishing lure, like the one that I showed you, uploaded it to the website. You can just click download, it goes onto your computer or right into the 3D printer and you click print and you give it a little while and out comes a finished fishing lure. <laughs> and then you can bondo it and paint it and whatever, but there must be tens of millions of files online that you can just download and print out. Like that like that phone stand that I made, I was working at my computer a bunch and needed to be able to see my phone screen at the same time, so I thought, well, I'll just design that. And that was probably before the big websites were up with millions of STL files on it. But now, you need to stand for your iPhone and you got a 3D printer sitting right there, you just go on, iPhone 11 stand, choose one of 8,000 of them, download it, print it. All right, that's enough of a lecture. Just just go ahead and grab yourself a 3D printer. It does appear that the rain's letting up. I just looked at the radar again, and it's like these big, nasty blotches of uh, thunder and lightning. Looks like they're spaced out about one an hour. They come marching through, but it's already 6.30, so I'm going to go ahead and print uh, two or three of these. Ooh, if I got enough battery power. We'll see how much battery power I got. Yeah, maybe I'll just print one more tonight. I think I got the battery power for that. That's the other thing with the cheap 3D printers. I don't know if it's the case with the expensive ones, but with a cheap one, if something screws up, which it often does, and you have to stop the print, there's really no way to start it back up. So for something like this, it's not a big deal. Maybe you lost a half an hour and three cents worth of plastic, but you get these massive prints that could take... I mean, I've, I think I've done prints before that took 18 or 20 hours super intricate and you get 90 percent of the way done and something happens it runs out of plastic you're not watching it runs out of plastic or it gets bumped or who knows what and then you have to start the process all over again so yeah that said i'll just print one at a time maybe i think tomorrow the sun will be out and i can charge my batteries back up guess i better check and make sure this fits perfectly before i print a bunch more out this stupid tent don't buy this tent It's a good thing I checked. Looks like I measured it wrong. I did. I measured the outside perfectly. And the inside a little bit. I'm like uh, one or two millimeters off. But it's super easy to go back in and change that one measurement and print it out again. It'll take about two minutes. Hey, thanks for watching. See you guys next week. I'm thinking uh, be more. Imagine, imagine me doing more chainsaw and cutting trees and chainsaw milling. But I think that's on the schedule for the rest of the week. But I do have a bunch of trees that I need to take down and mill up, get ready for the next big build. Come back if you like. Thanks. That one came out pretty nicely. Oh, perfect fit. 
Nice. But yeah, that's great. Put them on by hand.